Good morning. Good morning. And again, we are delighted to be here to share with you on today. It is a joy to come and worship with uh, the Robin Wood Church uh, from the time that we come, made our presence here on this campus. You all have shown us so much love, and we feel the love every time we come together. So we're here today to share another word of the Lord on today as I sought the Lord again. Uh, what is it that you would want me to share uh, with the Robin Wood Church? And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm chapter 40 or Psalm number 40. And I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. Again, we thank uh, God for uh, Minister JT and the, and the music ministry that comforts our heart every time we hear uh, them sing. Let's put our hands together for them, for the work that they do, to let them know it's not in vain. Psalm 40, verse number one, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up out also of an horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going and he had put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our God many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord again the psalmist David says I waited patiently for the Lord I, I want to talk about today wait just uh, look at somebody and say wait 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 amen wait how many know that waiting is not easy it's not an easy thing to do to wait because waiting puts you in a a stationary mode because the answer to your request is not a yes, it's not a no, but it is wait. Growing up in my home, I can remember many times my making a request to my mom or to my dad, and they would sometimes say, wait. Green, I would almost rather they say yes or no, but because they said wait uh, made it so much difficult because of what I was expecting them to do. It's not easy in waiting, but we have to understand that waiting is beneficial because as they say, good things come to those who wait. Those who wait. I am grateful for, and I just have to say this, uh, for my wife, and I thank God for her, but I want to tell you that good things come. To the, wave your hand, Terry. Good things come to those who wait amen look what the look what the bible helps us to know in isaiah chapter 40 it says they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength shall mount up with wings like eagles shall run not be weary shall walk and not faint watch watch the benefit of waiting he says they that wait upon the lord shall renew strength and uh, I believe there are some of us in here, if not all of us, need more strength because so many things and cares of this world can sap the strength out of you. So many pressures of life can take your strength. Even what um, we're experiencing right now as a body of Christ, Robin Wood Church, this can take the strength away. But uh, Isaiah said if we wait on God, he's going to give us more strength. And I want to encourage you, Robin Wood, that strength is on the way. Strength of the Lord is on the way. Then he says, if you wait, he says, you'll be able to 
uh, mount up like eagles. So not only will he give you strength, but he'll give you elevation. Amen. He'll take you higher than you could have ever gone before. He didn't say a dove. He didn't say uh, um, um, a vulture. He didn't say a sparrow. Uh, he said you're going to have eagle's wings. And the, 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 the nature of eagle's wings is that it allows the eagle to soar in stormy environments. And um, some of us in here know something about a storm. And if it wasn't for the strength of those eagle wings, we would not have been able to make it. So he gives us eagle's wings for elevation. Then watch this. He says, you'll be able to run and not be weary and walk and not faint. That speaks about perseverance. So what does waiting on God does? It gives you strength. Waiting on God gives you the ability to soar higher. And waiting on God gives you the ability to persevere even under pressure. And so there are three things I want to share from Psalms chapter 40 and verse number 1. Look at the place of waiting. David says, I waited on the Lord and I was in a horrible pit. Notice where he was while he was waiting. He was in a horrible pit, and in that day, that horrible pit spoke about a muddy place, a miry place where um, not only are you stuck, but every time you move, it seemed like you sink lower. If you know anything about miry or even um, um, quicksand, it, if you ever fallen in quicksand, um, not only it causes you to be stuck, but it, every time you move, you sink a little lawyer, so you don't know what to do. But David says, I, I know what it means to be in a horrible pit, and the only thing I could do uh, was wait on God. Now, I've never been in a horrible pit in that fashion. I've never been in miry clay, but I've had my pit situations. Amen. I've had some pit situations, and here's some things that can be pit situations. Financial hardship can be a pit situation. Amen. Um, physical sickness can be a pit situation. Amen. Y'all can say amen. Emotional upheaval can be a pit situation. Amen. Family drama, as we call it, can be a pit situation. Am I talking to anybody in here? We've all had pit situations in our lives, but Waiting is the way out. Let me say that again. Waiting is the way out. And David says, I waited patiently on the Lord even while I was in my pit. Now, please understand that just because in your pit doesn't mean you have to be pitiful. Amen. Just because you're in a pit does not mean you have to be pitiful because pitiful means the to be sad or to be dismayed. David said he was in his pit, but that didn't mean he was pitiful because David says not only I waited on God, but I was patiently waiting on God, which meant I had enough assurance that if I waited on God long enough, he was going to bring me out. And all I'm here to do is encourage somebody and say, whatever pit you might be in, just know that if you learn how to trust in the Lord, wait on the Lord, how many know he will bring you out? He will bring you out. So look what David said. I was in my pit. Now understand the text. David says, I was in a pit, but here's what I want to share, uh, JT, that even though you might be in a pit and it might be painful and it might be problematic, please hear me, that even though you may be in a pit doesn't mean it's permanent. You have to understand that a pit does not mean it is permanent because David lets us know that the Lord brought him out. And guess what? If the Lord brought David out of his, he can bring you out of yours. Because the same God who blesses you, he blesses me. The same God who watches over you, he watches over me. So David helps us understand that even though your pit is painful, even though it's problematic, he says your pit doesn't have to be permanent. You have to understand the three Hebrew boys were in a pit when they were in the fiery furnace. But if you know the Bible, you know that God brought them out. Amen. Do I have some Bible readers here? When you understand Daniel, he was in the den 
of lions. And how many know that God brought him out? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, maybe, maybe Jesus. Think about Jesus dying on the cross, shedding his precious blood for us. The text says they took him down from the cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. But watch this. You know that his pit was not permanent because the Bible says early Sunday morning he rose. And I thought I'd get some better applause on that one. Jesus lets us know you might be in a pit, but I'm able to bring you out. Now, if God can bring Jesus out of a dead situation, guess what he can do for you? He can work miracles in your life. Hallelujah. You need to understand that your pit is not permanent. You have to understand that there is an expiration date on your pit. Glory be to his name. This is what them of old say in our culture. Here's what them of old says. Trouble don't last always. You have to understand that trouble will soon pass away. But while it is passing, don't be pitiful Learn to give God praise. That's a hard thing to do. Learn to tell the Lord, I am going to wait on you. I am still going to trust in you. So look at the place of waiting. It was a horrible place. Now look at the persistence in waiting. David says, while I was in my pit, it was horrible, but I waited. He literally says, while in my pit, I waited and I kept on waiting on God until he moved in my favor. Because here's what the Lord promised us. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I'm able to deliver you from every last one of them. Let me say that again. The Lord says there are many afflictions, but I am able to deliver you from every last one of them. That tells me whatever your situation is, God is able to deliver Yes, he is. David says, I was in a horrible situation, but I had enough trust to keep on asking God to deliver me. When I asked my dad for what I needed from him, and he said, okay, Larry, uh, wait, and if you wait, I'll give it to you. Now, I took my father at his word, and every chance I got, every chance I got, I, um, you call it nag or you call it bothering him. But listen, you told me you were going to do it. And so I'm going to keep on asking you to honor what you, asked, what you said you would do until you've done it. Here's what I said in that fashion. Here's what David said. I cried unto the Lord. Do you not know even in your pit it's okay to cry? It's okay to call on God. It's okay to seek the Lord. It's okay to let the Lord know you are in trouble. And the Bible says he is a very present help in trouble. So if we know God is a very present help in trouble, when you're in trouble, it's nothing wrong with crying out unto the Lord. I have a grandson named Nasir and a granddaughter named Alir. And I remember even with my children, I remember that uh, while they were in the crib and, and, they, and they would cry and they would try to seek my attention and, and though I couldn't get at them right now, they kept on crying because they knew they had their father's ear and all they were saying, even though it wasn't audible as we know it, their cry was saying, Daddy, come and pick me up out of this crib. Daddy, come and brace me and Daddy, come and throw your arms around me. And they kept on crying until it caught my attention enough to come over to the crib, take them out of the crib, wrap them in my arms. And when I did, they stopped crying. This is what the Lord is saying to you. You may be in your pit, but God is saying, don't stop crying to me because I love you that much that it won't be long in your crying. I'm going to come over where you are. I'm going to pick you up out of that, wrap you in my arms, and let you know everything is going to be all right. How many know God will do that? He'll wrap you in his arms and let you know that everything is going to be all right. David says, I was in a horrible pit, but what I had to do was learn to wait on the Lord. Because waiting on God also disciplines us. Waiting on God also strengthens our resolve 
to trust in him enough to know that he may not come when we want him, but he's going to come right on time. <laughs> Waiting is a process. Waiting is a process. I look at Brother JT, and I'm not trying to pick on him, but he and his wife are about to have another baby. Waiting is a process. <laughs> Hallelujah. You mothers ought to understand. Waiting is a process. Waiting, waiting is a process, and, and there's changes in waiting. Sometimes frustration sets in in waiting, but listen, don't let your frustration keep you from knowing that God still loves me enough that he's going to free me sooner or later. You have to wait for the process. I was teaching uh, my, my granddaughter, and I'm not a great cook, but one day I was uh, she asked, say, Paul, Paul, let's, let's, let's bake a cake. And I said, okay, if that's what you want, let's, let's bake a cake. So we got the ingredients, we got the eggs, we got the flour, we got the nutmeg, we got sugar, we got water, we got oil, we got the cake mix, and we mixed it all together. Now watch this. None of it was really edible by itself. Hallelujah. But when you mix it all together, somebody know what I'm talking about. When you mix it all together, what was, uh, uh, what was uh, may not have been tasteful ended up being delectable. Now watch this. After we set the temperature in the oven to 375, after we greased the pan, and y'all looking at me, but I did the best I could. But uh, after we greased the pan, we poured all the ingredients in the pan. We put the pan in the oven. But here's the thing. It was a process. And every now and then, my daughter, my granddaughter would say, Papa, is the cake ready? And I said, no, Nalia, it is a process. Fifteen minutes later, is the cake ready? No, Nalia, it's a process. I saw the cake rising, but it wasn't ready. I saw it starting to turn brown on top, but it wasn't ready. And this is what, how my mother worked uh, it in on how it was ready. She would stick a fork in it, glory be to his name. And then when she stuck the fork in it and it came out dry, watch this, she knew it was ready. Guess what? It looked like it was ready on the outside, but it wasn't ready on the inside. And we have to understand that God doesn't look at our outside. He looks at our inside. And even though it's hot in your life and even though it's hard in your life, God says, I know when you're ready and I know when to pull you out. Glory be to his name. Some of us need to know that in our waiting, God is using that to strengthen us. God is using that to draw us closer to him. God is using that for us to really trust in him like we ought to. And when it's time for God to take us out of our fiery pits or whatever storm we in he knows when to pull us out but sometimes God says you're not ready and so I have to keep you there in that in that hot situation here's what Job said he tried me in the fire but when he saw that I was good he brought me out as pure gold that's how God is doing here's the thing you need to know even though God is trying us in the fire, he knows how to adjust the temperature. He's going to make sure that it's not going to consume you. As I said about the three Hebrew boys, they were put in a fiery furnace seven times hotter. But guess what? They walked out of that furnace without a smell. They walked out of that furnace without any harm or danger. That's what God is saying. Even though you're in your pit, you're going to come out better than what you did when you went in. So he says you got to be patiently waiting on God. Waiting is good. But here's the last thing. Look at the person in whom we ought to be waiting on. The text says, David says, I waited on Larry. No, he didn't say that. He says, I waited on the Lord. I didn't wait on the government. I didn't wait on the president. I didn't wait on my... Um, Councilman or councilwoman, I, I waited on the Lord because he's the only one that's going to be able to get me out of this situation. To Robin Wood, he's the only one that's going to be able to bring us out of our Trinity love. He's the only one that is able to bring us out of our situation. And David says, I learned how to wait on God. Now watch this. When he was waiting, he wasn't whining. He wasn't whimpering. 
Here's what he was doing. He was worshiping. Because the Bible says that he cried. And when you understand the, the, the etymological study of that cry, it wouldn't mean tears. It meant that he was really calling on God in prayer and supplication. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. David says, I wasn't crying with tears. I wasn't biting my nails. I wasn't knocking in the knees. I wasn't pulling my hair out. I was worshiping the Lord while I was waiting. I was saying, Lord, until you bring me out, I'm going to trust you. Lord, until you bring me out, I'm going to serve you. Listen, Omar, I just heard the Lord tell me to tell you un until Anna, God brings Anna across that border, and he's going to do that. But in the meantime, just keep trusting in him. Keep waiting on him because even though she's in a different country, she's still, she's still loved by God, and God is still watching over her. How many know that God is watching over Anna? Y'all clap your hands in here. And he's going to bring her across that border. Yeah, she might be in a horrible pit, but we're going to keep trusting God that he's going to bring Anna across that border. The Bible says when you wait on God, here's what the Bible says. In due season, he knows how to lift you up. In due season, God knows how to lift you up. If you learn how to wait on God, in due season, he'll lift you up. There's a song that, that we sing, and maybe you know it, I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Here's what he said. It was love that lifted me, and that love is God's love. Listen, no matter what you're going through, God loves you. No matter how hard it is in your life, God loves you. No matter how things may be difficult and sometimes you seem like it's unbearable, God still loves you because that's the kind of God that we serve. He says you can count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. That is a pit because he says the trying of your faith works patience. It helps us to wait. If you want to avoid being a patient, you better learn how to be patient. I think I'll say that again. If you want to avoid being a patient, you better learn how to be patient. Because if you get ahead of God, you hurt yourself. Abraham got ahead of God with Sarah when the Lord told him, I'm going to bless you with a son. And in his old age, the Lord said this. He said, I'm going to bless you with a son. But because he couldn't wait, he let his wife convince him since the Lord has taken so long. The Bible says, uh, Sarah says, Abraham, I've got a handmaid over here, and if you just want to, since I'm barren, since um, my wound is shut up, and God is taking too long, just go in there and lie with, with, with Hagar. Here's what the Lord just told me. Anytime you get out of the will of the Lord, it's a lie. <laughs> she said, go in there and lie. Y'all ain't in here. He said, go in there and lie with Hagar. You get out of the will of God, you're walking in a lie. He said, go in there and lie with her, and she's going to bless you with a child. Well, she did, but that's not the child God promised. And you need to know that sometimes what you think you're receiving is not necessarily from the Lord. That's not the will of the Lord. The Lord said, wait. I'm going to bless you with a promised child. The, the, Ishmael wasn't a promised child. He was a child of promiscuity. Are y'all listening to me? You got to make sure you wait on the Lord and wait on the promise because everything God says, he will bring it to pass. The Bible says he's not a God that he should lie, son of man that he should repent. If God said it, he'll do it. If God spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. You just have to learn how to wait on him. And even though uh, Abraham didn't wait, God forgave him and finally blessed him with the promised child named Jacob. If you just learn how to wait on God and understand the promises of God, or yea and in him, amen, everything he promised you, he will do. And I pray that you've been encouraged by this word because every time um, I, I bring the word of God, um, 
I eat of it first. I'm like my mom. Before she served us, whatever she cooked, she ate first to make sure it was, it was tasteful and delectable and good for the body. And I want you to know that even me, I had to take this word and make sure that I'm waiting on God. I'm trusting in God because I don't want to tell you nothing that I'm not doing myself. So David helps us understand that even in our pain, we have to wait. And even in our frustrations, we have to wait. And make sure that we're waiting on the right person who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because just like he came out of his horrible pit, he promised to bring us out of ours. And I want you to be encouraged that even though waiting is a hard thing to do, it's beneficial. Your life will be better waiting. You keep holding on to your faith. Keep trusting God to bring you out. Keep trusting him to bring you up. To see or keep trusting him to bring you over. Whatever he said he was going to do, you got to wait for him to do it because he's no shorter than his word. And in your pit, you need to know that God has not forgotten you. Sister Green, he has not forgotten you. He still cares about you. And all he wants us to do is trust him. He doesn't want us to try to figure it out. He's already worked it out. He said, all I want you to do is trust me. That's a word. God bless you for Robin Wood. All he wants you to do is trust him. Don't try to figure it out. Just trust him. Because if you trust him, he'll bring things to pass that has purpose and value for your life. It's hard. But I'm going to keep on trusting God because I know he's never let me down. Every pit that I've been in, God has brought me out. And if he did it before... He can do it again. And so if you bow your heads right now as a word of prayer, let us seal this word in prayer. And I want you to think about what you've heard on today. And I pray it hasn't fallen on deaf ears. I pray it has fallen on good soil. And I pray that you really search your soul and say, am I really waiting on God? Am I really trusting God to do what he says? His word is true. And every word he spoke will become a reality, but I have to learn how to wait. And so, God, in Jesus' name, as we search ourselves, try us and know that we are true to what you called us to do. We know waiting is hard, but it's not impossible because you give us the Holy Spirit to keep us strong even when we feel like giving up. There's somebody who may be dealing with a horrible pit right now. But God, just like you brought David out, you can bring them out. And as a matter of fact, not only you brought him out, but you put a new song in him which suggests that you gave him something he didn't have before. And so God put a new song in the heart of the hearer to let them know that it is well with their soul. Father, we pray that if someone's here who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that you would save them today, that you would remind them of what your son did on Calvary and how he hung, bled, and died for the sins of the world, and then on the third day got up. We pray, God, that every person in here who has heard this word won't leave the same way they came. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and every heart said amen. God be praised. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Brother Larry. So this is our time of invitation this morning, and I think the invitation is very clear that maybe you have a hurt in your life, something that has, maybe it's brought some tears, some crying into your life, but what, what David did is he brought those tears and that cry to the Lord. And so this is a time now, during this next song, it's an invitation to you that if there. If you have a burden, if you have something on you that you need to cry out to the Lord about, maybe it's something you've been crying out for a long time, but it's still appropriate to come and let's cry that, that prayer out to him again this morning and what, as we wait. That is what the patience looks like as we, we just continue to pray and pray and pray and then he will come through. He will come through for us. And so let's come, let's lay those burdens 
at his feet. Let's cry out to him this morning. And maybe you've never cried out to God before. This is also the time for you as well. If you've never cried out to him, the Bible says that we all have a problem, and that problem is sin. And that we have disobeyed God. We have disobeyed uh, his standard of perfection. We've all fallen short of his glory is what the Bible says. And that the wages of sin is death. What we deserve for that is, is uh, eternity in a place called hell. But the good news is, is that Jesus paid, our, paid the penalty for that sin in full on the cross. And so if, if we, whoever would, would call out to him in faith that he has eternal life, he has forgiveness available that he wants to give out, but he is waiting on us to cry out to him just like David did. And so if you're in that place, you've been stuck in a sin or something like that, or you've never cried out to the Lord to be forgiven of your sin problem, and you want to make him the Lord and Savior of your life, this is also the time for you. As we sing this song, you come to this altar. We'll have Scott up here if you need prayer, and uh, let's just let's give that over to the Lord.